Welcome to part two of my Learn JavaScript coding tutorial. In this series, I'll be introducing you to the basics of JavaScript and helping you to get started. This tutorial series is designed for beginners who have very little or no experience with JavaScript or coding in general, as it will cover many of the basics. Most of the things that we learn in this series will easily translate to many other coding languages, and JavaScript is a really easy language to get started with. If you are new to JavaScript and aren't sure what JavaScript is, I do recommend going back and watching part one of this series. Today we're going to walk through the process of creating your very first JavaScript script, while also helping you to understand why and how it works. In reality, this part should be called How to JavaScript. As mentioned in the previous video, I'll be using Adobe Dreamweaver for this series. However, there are many other great editors out there. One which I'd recommend is a free editor called Brackets, which I've included a link for in the description of this video. First, we are going to start with a new HTML file. To save this file, we are going to navigate to our htdocs folder and save this file in a new folder called My First Script. I am currently running a local Apache web server, which is why I'm saving this to my htdocs folder. However, if you are not running a local web server, that's not an issue. Since JavaScript is a client-side language, your browser will be able to run it regardless. Because I have a local server set up, in order to preview my code, I will be opening my browser and navigating to 127.0.0.1. However, if you have not set up a local web server, then doing this in your browser will not work. Instead, the editor that you are using probably has a built-in preview or live preview feature. In Dreamweaver, we can go to File, Real-Time Preview, and select a browser. This is how you'll be able to preview the code that you've written. If your editor does not have this feature, then all you have to do is open the file in your browser. You can do that by typing file colon slash slash and then the path to the file. Or by finding your file in Windows Explorer or in Finder, right clicking and opening it in the browser. Dreamweaver started us off with a basic HTML layout. If we preview this page in our browser, we will see a blank HTML document. Now you can't just type JavaScript in the document, you have to tell the browser that a section of code is JavaScript. So to do this, we will create a script tag with the type set to text JavaScript. Then we will close our script tag. And now everything between the open tag and the close tag will be interpreted as JavaScript. Everything inside of these script tags I may sometimes refer to as a JavaScript block or a script block. In our code, we're going to type document.write hello world. Notice the use of quotes, parentheses, and a semicolon. In practice, you likely may never use the document.write function. However, this is a simple way for us to tell the JavaScript code to do something just to get started. If we save our file and flip back to the browser and refresh, we will now see a blank document which says, hello world. You'll see that even though our code says document.write hello world, the only thing we see on our page is hello world. That's because we typed this inside the JavaScript block and the rest of this was interpreted as code. The browser parsed the code, and the document.write function told the browser to display whatever we entered in between the parentheses. Every line in JavaScript must end with a semicolon. This is how the JavaScript parser, or the browser, knows when one command has ended and when you have moved on to the next command. It is possible to include multiple lines of code on the same physical line in your document because JavaScript uses a semicolon to determine when the command has finished and not the line breaks. However, doing so gets messy and doesn't look very good. For example, if we had three lines of code, this would be the preferred method to type it, as it makes it easier to read and look at. However, removing the line breaks would still result in the same output, and this is still three lines of code. Anyway, building on our script, we are next going to type console.log hello developer. If we go back to our browser and refresh, we will still see the same thing in our browser, hello world. But if we right click and open our console, in the console, we will see that it says, hello developer. That's because just like the document.write function outputs text to the browser, or the document, the console.log function outputs text to the console. We are going to dive in much deeper into objects and functions later in this series, but for now, it is worth pointing out that the entire HTML document is represented in JavaScript as an object referred to as document. Within the code for the document object, write is one of the many functions available to us. So when we type document.write, we are telling JavaScript to use the write function or the write command, which is part of the document object. As a result, the document also happens to be where the text is written to. In the same way, the console is represented in JavaScript by an object called console. 
and log is one of many functions that are part of the console's object code. We are calling the log function on the console object which outputs text to the console. While we're in the console, you can also type and execute JavaScript code here as well. This is a fun way to experiment and see if things work. One thing we'll do is type console and press dot. But if we pause for a second, we will see that the Chrome console shows a number of available options. These are all functions that exist as part of the console object. You can see that in addition to log and many other functions, there's an option called error and an option called warn. If we retyped our console.log hello developer code into the console, it will output this phrase to the console again. However, if we typed console.warn hello developer, it will still output text to the console, but because we're using the warn command, it will look differently, giving us a yellow warning background. We can also type console.error hello developer to output text that looks more like an error. I won't go too much into any of these things, but if you're new to JavaScript or to coding in general, I at least wanted to open your eyes up to a few things that you may not have been aware of. Back in our code, document.write in this context is really just using extra code to create static content. The advantage to using JavaScript is that it's ideal for generating dynamic content, as well as allowing the user to interact with the site without requiring a refresh to happen. I won't get too in-depth in this video, since we'll cover many of these things in the upcoming episodes, but it's important to remember that JavaScript can be used to dynamically generate content or even change content on the fly, especially in response to user input. Back in our browser, I'll use the console to demonstrate. This is only one of many possibilities, but let's say that the user has input two numbers, 44 and 55. Without refreshing the page, we can use JavaScript to calculate the sum of those numbers, We'll type 44 plus 55, enter. It gives us the answer, 99. That also means that we can do anything with the result of a calculation. We could type document.write 44 plus 55, and without refreshing, when we press enter, it would write 99 to the output of the browser, dynamically changing the browser's view on the fly. Or to get a bit more dynamic, we could get the current date using JavaScript. Back in our code, I'll type document.write new date Again, this will make more sense in future episodes, but we're creating a new instance of a date object, and upon doing so, by default, that date object holds the current time. Back in the browser, refresh, and we can see the current date. If I refresh again, that date will update. That's it for today's Learn JavaScript tutorial. If you found this to be helpful, please hit the like button. Please also consider subscribing and sharing this video, as it really helps me to continue to make more tutorial videos. If you're interested in learning other languages, please check out my other coding tutorial series. If you are not a beginner and already have a good knowledge of JavaScript, you may wish to check out some of my more advanced JavaScript tutorials. Thanks for watching.